The purpose of this tutorial is to show you how to cut the panels. But what we're going to do right now is we're going to finish off this section and we have pre-cut a few of the panels because this is what we're showing today is top of the wall. How do you handle the top of the panels and cut them to fit? So we're just stacking these panels right now. And this is kind of important. If you look at this particular panel, there's a lot of dings, a lot of damages, a lot of dents, a lot of rents. It doesn't look good. But because of the design of InsoFast, we're still going to have a solid insulation package, OK? Continuous insulation all the way across because what we engineered or what Ed engineered into the panels was a tongue and groove interlock. So even though the panels are a little dinged, a little damaged, it's really not going to affect the overall performance of the insulation as we push it down right here. You can see how that's now a solid insulation all the way through. Now here, here's Here's the tricky part. This is the top of the wall, as we call it. Two, four, six, and whatever dimension up above. So you can do it a couple of ways. You can get a tape measure, and you can tape from the joist down to the panel, get your measurements, mark it on your panel, and then cut it. I am way... I am not that ambitious. So the way I would do it is I would hold this upside down and face it this way, get it nice and level, and then see where my mark is. Now my mark on this particular panel, we're marking right to the top of that uh, tongue. Oh, right about there. Now, this isn't rocket science. We just need to get it close. In so fast is rough carpentry. It's not finished carpentry. It doesn't have to be perfect. We have to make sure it's flat and level and it doesn't it doesn't have to be beautiful. It's just, after all, insulation and framing. Now, because I'm cutting the panels in half and I'm doing it via video for demonstration, I'm going to want to just bring it up a little bit to make it easier on me. But as you see right here, I have a gap. This gap is going to be really important because that's where I'm going to make my cuts. So this panel that we marked right there and right there. I'm going to get a straight edge guide. So you can see where we're going to be making the cut. There are several methods to cut in so fast. One is with the regular hand saw. Now this is a sharp tooth PVC pipe cutter. And if you look at the, the blade on here, it's real sharp and it's real fine. And that'll give you a good cut with, when you're cutting foam. So you're going to be following that line and just make nice, even cuts, letting it come through. And when you get to the stud, that's where you need the saw. You don't need it for the, for the foam. You can do that with a razor blade knife. When you get to the stud, It's nice to have a good sharp handsaw.
Now, that's a good saw. Another saw that you can use, and just because I'm a guy, I love power tools, we use power tools. Now the power tools are going to make short work of this, and I'm just going to turn this the other way so I can go from right to left. You can see how quickly and nicely that cut this particular piece. Real good cut. Real fine. See that rough cut? Rough cut. And we can put that up there. Now, you can see it's short, and we measured it to this interlock. So this interlock now, we can pull it on down tight. So it, it's up and down. Otherwise, what you would have to do is, if it was a full panel and you were trying to make this fit, you would have to notch out right by this wood joist to make sure that you could lift it up and drop it down. The interlock, the tongue and groove, up and then back down. Now. Here's the piece, the top part of the panel that we cut. Now, it is not going to fit on top of here perfectly. All right. Again, that interlock, that tightness is right there, it's holding it in place. So, looking at what we got here, this panel goes all the way to this edge right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a razor blade knife and we're going to cut this tongue off. Now I'm going to give myself a little extra room here. And again, this is not fine carpentry. <laughs> it's carpentry that works. All right, now with that tongue removed, for you uber energy savers who want to make sure you get a nice tight, good seal up here, put a bead of glue down right along that top edge. And that'll seal that together. Now, in the gluing process, on a, on a panel like this, you have almost 10 inches 10 inches of glue surface. So at 108 pounds per lineal inch of holding power, you have about a thousand pounds worth of pull off, ultimate pull off right in this section. So this panel, albeit small, it still has a lot of hold. So we got to get this last piece cut right here. And again, it's this piece is what you want. So you turn this upside down and backwards and you want to cut it right to here. Now we also want to cut it in half and we cut the other one in half 
and I know where that mark is, so I'm not going to bother measuring it again. Again, it's rough carpentry. It's not fine carpentry. But this time, we're going to use an even manlier saw. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. Now, I love this saw. I hate this saw. I'll tell you why I hate this saw. There's a lot of power packed into this saw, and you're basically just cutting foam. Foam is nothing more than structural air. So if you get a little wavy with the saw, it'll just cut out and just shoot foam everywhere and give you a horrible cut. So that's when and why I have this thing to hold, uh, to, make this, to make this cut. Because I'm going to be using a straight edge guide, that's what this is going to be, and I have to figure out where this is going to be. So I need, that's my mark, that's my line, and if I measure with the tape measure, right here to here, I'm getting five inches. So five inches. Five inches. Five inches. Now, as good as this straight edge guide is, you can still push it off a little bit with the saw. So I like to use little nails like this and make the in so fast a nice pin cushion and gives me a nice stable straight edge guide I can cut right through. Now, it's this piece I need to go right here. So in order to measure that, I need to place this right here. And I get my line to be right about where this stud is, which makes sense. That's where this indication line is. So this piece is the one I'm using. I have to cut with a razor blade knife. I can use a saw, but I can also use a razor blade knife. And I'm going to cut it right along this edge right here. Make a couple of quick scores with a razor blade knife. And there's my wall, and that's the top of the wall. So the top of the wall, cutting the panels to fit really quick, razor blade knife, skill saw, saber saw. The one thing I'll tell you not to use is a table saw. A table saw is way too powerful. It'll grab the foam, it'll shoot it across the room, it's really tricky, and I think those saws are dangerous. So be careful when you're working with InsoFast. Be safe. And if you have any questions, please give us a call, text us, uh, send us a, uh, an email with pictures of your situation, and we'll try to do it live and show you how to do it.